guys, you've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, it's red hot and ready. And hey guys, do you like it uncut? Do you like it uncensored? Well, you're getting it raw today. We got big chunks of bloody meat hanging on hooks, man. They're hitting the plate a little while later. And the only thing we're cooking is the accompaniments, okay? I'm gonna be hanging out in the backyard playing with some raw fish. That's right, we've got sushi, we've got sashimi, and we've got maki. So come on back, we're chopping it up, we're seasoning it up. Hey, if things don't work out, it's a day off work. You know that's not gonna happen. Okay, guys, this is how the show plays out, okay? This is about separating the boys from the men, the men from the sheep, the crickets from the snake charmers, the chopsticks from the wieners, and the... It's about raw food. Back off, the sow is mine! It's about being a man, it's about going back in time, it's about beating your chest, baby, it's about coming down. Let's not light a fire, let's eat it raw! Woo-wee! Check this out. We got scallops here. These are fresh Digby scallops, man. Check these out. Fresh scallops. Can we eat them raw? Hell yes. Dip them in a little bit of chili pepper and mmm. Mmm. We want to talk about the meat. We want to talk about the fish. You get some raw stuff, you make sure it's fresh. You can eat it raw. Mm -hmm. You got that? You get the raw stuff, you get it fresh, and you can eat it raw. Okay? Let's make some ceviche here. Ceviche. What does it sound like? Because it's fresh, baby. You're absolutely wrong, my friend. It's not French. Okay, it's Spanish. That's right. Ceviche is a way of cooking without heat, okay? It's raw fish marinated in citrus juice, okay? The acidic content in these juices is actually going to cook up these scallops or the fish. Scallops in this case, but you can use salmon, you can use whatever fish you want, okay? Tuna works equally as well. But it's going to cook this. It's going to get rid of the bacteria. It's still going to be nice and raw in the interior. It's going to be fantastic. Make sure it's fresh. Here's how we do it, okay? We got about a pound, a little over a pound of raw, fresh scallops here. Gonna dump them in the bowl. Got half to three quarters of a cup of lime juice and lemon juice. Gonna dump that in. Got some chili flakes. This is optional, man. You want it hot, you have it hot. But generally, raw fish is fairly bland. You wanna spice it up. You wanna give it a little bit of a kick, right? Yeah! Throwing that in. I like cilantro as well. This is, uh, gives it a really nice kind of herbaceous bite. And chives, right? You got those, Dean? Whoa, where are they? Oh, there. Whoa, they're over here now. Now, a little bit of cracked black pepper. If you let this sit for an hour, it's gonna be sufficiently cooked by the acid, okay? It's gonna be tasty. You can eat it with whatever you like. You know, you can eat it in bed, you can eat it on a plane, or you can have it on a train. You can put it in the drain, and it doesn't matter, man, because it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Mmm. That is so ready. If you don't feel like eating this at such a raw stage, that's okay. Let it sit for an hour, let it sit for two hours, it's gonna be great, okay? We'll be right back. All right, you're in trouble. You told that new cute girl next door that you love sushi just as much as she does. That's not true. But you don't know anything about it, do you? All right, boys, well, not to worry, because today I'm giving you a crash course in the traditional Japanese delicacy. Sushi is sophisticated, yet simple. So roll out your bamboo mats, because today I've got Michael from Hamachi House here to give you the scoop on sushi. It's all about the meat. Okay, guys, what's happening here is our ceviche is doing what it's supposed to do. Leave it alone, throw it in the fridge, it's gonna be all right. Hey, Cracker, why don't you put that over there in the fridge, okay? Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on now to our beefy bits. This here is a center cut piece of beef tenderloin, okay? You notice it's a little bit dark here. That's not a bad thing. If we we're gonna cook it, we'd probably leave that there. But because we're eating this raw, we're gonna take the first eighth of an inch off this, okay? And what I'm gonna do with this tenderloin is I'm gonna turn it into a couple different sort of things. One, we're gonna be showing you how to cook a steak, so I actually lied, there is a little bit of cooking on here, okay? We're gonna make a blue steak, okay? Or as the French say, bleu steak. And we're also gonna make steak tartare, which actually 
is a raw minced up meat product, right? And the reason we're using tenderloin is because there's very little fat in here, right? Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Trim it down because most of the bacteria, if there is any bacteria on this, which of course there is, is all in the outer regions. I gotta get my hands on some of those. Look that up. I think you'll find that I'm correct on this one. Okay, we're gonna cut a piece off here. This is what we would call a tornado, okay? We're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna throw that in the grill later just to show you what just a little bit of heat will do to a steak. Dead flesh for carnivores. Let us make our steak tartare. Let's cut this down in eighth inch strips. We're working with about a half pound tenderloin here. So this is gonna make at least four to six portions, okay? Because generally when you eat steak tar, tar, <laughs> it's, uh, it's only about a two ounce portion that you're eating at the most, okay? Got this cut down here, let's divide it up. That's not a knife, this is a knife, okay? Oh! Gonna chop it up very fine. It's as if it was gonna be made the hamburger, okay? Okay, we're getting that fairly fine here. We're gonna run this blade through it a couple more times. Okay, because this is gonna have such a velvety texture by the time we finish. I had an out of body experience there. It's a really strange experience when you float out of your body and all you're looking down is on your meat. You are so, so, <laughs> so dirty. We got our minced meat here, throwing it in the bowl, okay? We wanna make sure the bowl's cold, which it is. The meat has just come out of the refrigerator. The idea of protecting this from getting any more bacteria in it is keeping it cold. Keep it cold through the working process and if you're not gonna eat it right away, put it back in the fridge. But generally, the way we're doing this here, it, you should be eating like within at least 20 minutes, okay? Because this is going to start discoloring because we're adding acid to this, okay? These are capers, the pickle flower buds of the caper plant. I'm going to chop these up nice and fine. This is a very simple technique. Watch, hand here, fulcrum, just wiggle around like you're having a seizure. Oh, that's nice. Okay, we're going to toss these right into the bowl. What else we got here? We got about 10 anchovy fillets here, or fillets. You say filet, I say fillet. Let's call the whole thing off. Okay, about three chopped shallots here. Very sweet, reddish white onion. Got about a quarter cup of parsley. I'm gonna toss that straight in there. And a little bit of onion as well. That has a little bit more bite than the shallots. So you're gonna get the two different flavors for two different onions there. Let me just clean my hands here. Got some pepper. A lot of cracked black pepper, okay? Okay, got that happening there. Pinch of salt. A tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil, okay? Should be good enough. Toss this around a bit. Okay, what's missing here, okay? I don't know. Apart from the theme to uh, Little House in the Prairie, which will be good at this moment. I can do a good in the morning. Actually, Laura Ingalls would be great at this moment, wouldn't she, right? Right there, man. Yeah, come on, Laura, feed me the steak. He's a sick, fist and sick man. You don't have to worry because his sister's blind, right? Sick, 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 sick. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of acid to this. And acid in this case is lemon juice. One whole lemon, one large lemon, ready to be juiced. Mmm. That wasn't me, that was the cow, man. Okay, let's toss this around. Oh no, my friends, this is not complete yet. We're not going to complete it now. We're going to do that outside. Because if I give you all the information now, why are you coming back, right? It ain't for this pretty face. I know that. That's not true. Okay, guys, let's move it over here, okay? We're going to make a Venetian chocolatey sauce, right? What I have happening here is a pot. It's empty at the moment. What I'm going to add to it is two ounces of chocolate, half a cup of balsamic vinegar, clove and a half of garlic chopped, quarter cup of pine nuts. These are the seeds that actually come out of a Middle Eastern pine tree, okay? That's why they call them pine nuts. We got some currants. Sorry, Dean. That's your current vision, okay? We got some honey here. This is gonna sweeten the whole mess up, right? That along with the raisins. You know, the uh, pine nuts are gonna make it a little bit nutty. The chocolate is gonna make it a bit chocolatey. And the vinegar that we added in here is probably gonna make it a little bit vinegary. That's my guess. But I agree. Add a little bit of butter. And this is such an easy sauce, man. And it's a great accompaniment to raw foods. I knew it looked familiar. 
But you know that when we come back, we're gonna be doing it until it's raw. Dirty, dirty boys. We're here with Michael from Hamachi House and we're talking about sushi. Now, what are the different kinds of sushi? There's three kinds of sushi. It's one is sashimi uh -huh. and, the su and the nigiri and the maki. All right, Michael, what type of sushi are you making for us today? Now, today, I'm going to show how to make the California loaf. So, this is the seaweed and the avocado. Okay. And this is the cucumber we're going to use for the California loaf. This is the crab. Okay. And uh, this is the masago. And this it, is fish egg? Yeah, it's the fish egg. Uh, this is the rice, it's, it's the sushi rice. So how do we make the rice sticky? We put in the vinegar, uh -huh. salt and su uh, sugar mixed together. So we start making now. Yeah, we're ready. So. And so the reason for wetting your hands is so the rice doesn't stick to them? Yes, and then we start to load, uh, pick up the rice okay. on your hand. So start to spread. Make sure you get into all the little corners. Yes. <laughs> and putting the sesame seed on the top of the rice. Okay. And upside down and print the masago. So a thin layer of fish egg? Yes. And the cucumber. And the crab. With half. Okay. Now time for avocado? Yeah. So thinly sliced pieces. Yes. Okay, now we're ready to roll. When we start to roll, we have to very tight. Okay. First, first step. So make the first roll very tight. Yeah, first roll very tight like that. Okay. And then start to roll. To Just squeezing together. Yeah. That looks great. Now we're going to chop it up. Yeah. Just cut up the middle of the California loaf. Middle first. Yeah. And then again. So you should get six pieces out of one roll. Yes. All right. That looks great. All right. Stick with us because up next we're testing it out. From Hamburg to Yorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot Ready. We're back with Michael from Hamachi House and we're ready to dig in. So how do we eat sushi? Yeah, so first of all, this is the chopstick. Uh -huh. We're going to <coughs> pick it up. So that's the wasabi? Yeah, this is the wasabi. And what is wasabi? The wasabi is just spicy stuff, like a master. So it's very hot, so you just use a little bit depending on what your taste is. Yes, that's right, okay. that's right. And then pick it up, one piece California roll. Go ahead. <laughs> so now, do you have to use chopsticks when you're eating this? Uh, depend. You can use the chopstick, or you can pick up the sushi by your finger. Okay. Yeah. So I can just use my yeah. hands. Yes. Mmm. Mm. That is great. I love sushi. Sushi is not only about the amazing taste and texture, but making sushi is an art. It's a real experience that you don't want to miss. Guys, we're back and we're still doing it raw, man. What we got happening here? We got some tuna. We got some fresh albacore tuna. We're going to make carpaccio. What the hell is carpaccio? Well, if you... Okay, I'll tell you what carpaccio is. It's thinly sliced raw flesh. I'm so scared! And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim this tuna down a bit. You see this uh, black spot here, or this brown kind of stripe? What that is, is that's what they call the bloodline, okay? When this fish was caught, like a lot of tunas that are caught, it wasn't blood properly. And you bite into this stuff, it's pretty bitter. You don't want to be chewing on that, right? Not as bitter as my ex-girlfriend, but plenty bitter. Hello, John. Okay, we're gonna crust this in fennel seeds, okay? These are the seeds of the plant that is used to make ouzo. We are throwing this on the grill but we're not gonna leave it there long. We're just gonna do it long enough to sear the outside. The interior is gonna be perfectly raw. Just gonna have a nice sort of toasted seed exterior. And it's gonna be really tasty. A little bit of cracked black pepper. I'm gonna sprinkle it on the surface that I'm working on as well, because I'm just gonna roll it around on it. So we just roll it around here. Similarly with this one, 
Yeah, that's looking good. You put a little coarse salt on it. Not too much. Let's oil this up just a bit. We got a very, very hot grill here, which is what we want, because otherwise we're going to be cooking this thing too much. The outside we want seared, and that's it. Just get some grill marks on this baby. Hey, Dean, what's Cracker doing there, man? Time traveling, baby. Okay, guy, and the capriccio is done. Okay, we're going to send this off to the fridge. Get out of my kitchen with that camera. Well, that's chilling down in the fridge. Let's do up these vegetables I promised you, okay? This is radicchio, and this is Belgian endive right here, okay? These are both members of the chicory family. That's the stuff that they used to flavor coffee with or use as a coffee substitute during the war, right? God, I could imagine waking up for five years without coffee. God, someone would be paying. It's scary for everyone who's involved. I'm gonna toss these in as quarters into our bowl here. And the radicchio, or pardon me, the Belgian endive as half. Funny thing about this stuff, when it arrives at the grocer, it's wrapped in dark blue paper or opaque paper of some kind. What that does, it keeps the light off it, because this stuff is photosensitive. That means when the light hits it, it starts turning brown. So it's best to take it out of the drawer, out of the dark, only when you're about to use it. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna be a big bloody brown mess, okay? And today, especially, it's gonna be bloody because we're serving it with raw meat, right here on Meat TV. Lots of olive oil, okay? That's the key to this. But don't get too much on, because this stuff's gonna start smoking up. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. And you're gonna lose your nice white color. Instead of it starting to go to a sort of a golden tone, it's just gonna have smoke stains all over it. Sort of like Cracker's underwear. Oh yeah, because it's fresh, baby. Lots of pepper. Gonna hit it with a little bit of balsamic vinegar as well. Mm-mm. That's the good stuff, right? We got some Italian sort of greens here. We got the balsamic vinegar, the extra virgin olive oil, the pepper, the salt. Mamma mia, this is the final lettuce, huh? Come on over to the grill, huh? How embarrassing. We set you up good. I mean, I let you meet my daughter. She's got the, the bigger ones, huh? Man, oh man, you can eat them a raw right off the tree. Watch out, boys. She's lethal. Oh, my God. When we come back, all meat, nothing but meat, all the time, right here on Meat TV. Blue steak, man, that is raw meat. It's all about the meat. Okay, guys, it's blue, it's rare, it's more than rare, it's almost raw, okay? We got our steak here. A little medallion of beef tenderloin. I'm just greasing it up here, get a little seasoning on it, it's going straight on. Got to keep a really good eye on this because this is going to cook way too fast, man. Okay, there we go, guys. We're cooking raw, so we're eating raw, right? Straight onto the grill. Keep an eye on that. It's only gonna take about a minute and a half. Okay, let's get this out of the way. We got our steak tartare over here. This is ready to be plated. We're gonna do two different versions here with two different garnishes. Here we are. This stuff is starting to discolor just slightly, okay? And I'll tell you why that is, because we added the lemon juice to it. So in a way, it's actually cooking a little bit without the heat. So any worries about bacteria and that sort of thing, don't worry any further, okay? Just make sure it's cold. The lemon juice, we're gonna take care of the rest. Okay, we have a couple different garnishes here. Got a little bit of Dijon mustard. Got hot sauce, Worcester, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. Let's throw some bread on here to enjoy it with. Just a simple French stick. I feel like I wanna use it. I can use that in this episode. I'm so dirty, I need a bath. Toss our steak. That's as dark as we want it right there. Let me tell you something else. When you're cooking a steak blue, you want to take it out, leave it out of the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes, half an hour, depending upon the thickness of it. Let it come to room temperature because you're cooking it for such a short period of time that when you cut into it, it's going to be cold on the inside if you don't leave it out for a few minutes, which is what we did with this. And this looks pretty good for me. We're going to set this right here. Okay, our tuna carpaccio. Albacore tuna carpaccio, we've just taken this out of the freezer, okay, where we chilled it down very quickly. Take a look at this. Nice exterior, perfectly raw on the interior. Check that out. You see all that sort of rainbowing there? That's the natural oils in the fish. You can tell this thing's fairly fresh. Quite often, they would slice carpaccio on a meat slicer while it's frozen, so you get paper-thin slices. But man, that ain't eating raw food. That's eating like raw dust or something, I don't know, but it's just not enough there. You know, 25 bucks for half an ounce of meat, forget about it, we're going big style here. So we're just gonna fan these out here. 
Okay, and we're gonna continue fanning this out here. This looks fantastic, man. Okay, got some bread. Hey, darling, what's hey. happening? What do you think? You hungry? You brought yourself an appetite? I don't think that you could ever talk me into eating this. Okay, what about a scallop? Oh, these look too good to leave. Are they cooked? They're totally cooked. Actually, they're really good. They have a really acidic flavor. That's it. Mm. That's what's killing all the bacteria. No, so this is... Oh, good. <laughs> Did I say killing bacteria? Because there are no bacteria, or have there ever been any bacteria ever involved with these scallops? <laughs> Honest. And you have to make sure when you're making things raw, or you're keeping things raw, cooking with raw foods, that you have to have really clean utensils. Anything that you, uh, anything that comes in contact with the food has to be nice and clean. And although John has a real potty mouth, <laughs> his utensils and his plates are always clean. Yeah. I'm just gonna make a divot in this. This is our steak territory. You really gotta try this. I'm gonna show you two different ways of garnishing it. One is with a raw egg, which is amazing. This is just gonna swim into the center of the meat and it's gonna live there. Dead flesh for carnivores. We got a little bit of bread here. Got a little hot sauce. Oh man, this is getting good. Well, you know what? It's looking a little bit better. A little Worcester, just around the plate, so you can dab your meat into it whenever you want. You'd know all about that cracker, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. So, what do you say? We're gonna try a bit, mush up our egg, grab a piece of meat. And, how's the taste? I gotta tell you, this is bringing something out in me. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to control this. This is that primordial thing that man just... You've got a crazy look in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I frightened god. her. Oh my. Really scared me. Oh my god, I was not ready for that. Well, I am. I'm red hot and ready. The home of smoky good freaks. <laughs>